This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility, and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email, which is profmchapman at gmail.com, or make an appointment to see me on 91384222. One of the commonest reasons that patients come to see me concerning their infertility is those women who suffer from polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's actually a very common condition. It doesn't necessarily mean infertility. Something like 5% of women do have polycystic ovarian syndrome. The vast majority have minimal symptoms. A few at the bad end of the spectrum can have obesity, no periods, increased hair growth, increased acne. But for the vast majority, it's usually slightly irregular periods. However, those irregular periods do suggest that at times ovulation doesn't occur. But they can also indicate that ovulation does occur because pregnancies occur without any treatment from me. Patients wonder why they've got polycystic ovarian syndrome. Well, we don't know the answer to that. Somewhere in the programming between the brain and the ovaries, there is a error being made in the way in which the hormones talk to each other from the ovaries, the oestrogen, talking back to the, the pituitary and the hypothalamus, which determine the level of the hormones that stimulate making an egg, initially FSH and secondly LH. We think that programming probably went wrong around about the time of puberty. Certainly PCOS is more common in girls uh, who are obese around the time of puberty and fat tissue converts male hormones into female hormones. So there's an excess of female hormones around about that time when the, when the programming is, is occurring. So when that goes wrong, the brain doesn't know how to interpret the signals, stimulation of the ovaries occur, and the follicles, some follicles grow. Follicles that will lead usually to the creation of an egg. They grow a little bit to three or four millimetres in diameter, and then stop. Those little follicles are producing oestrogen. So at, a ti at times when oestrogen should be low, they're actually higher than they should be. Not excessively high, but sufficient to make the pituitary confused. So it produces more of the LH hormone, which in turn stimulates male hormones in the ovary, which is why the most extreme cases we see excess hair and, and pimples, but it also interferes with ovulation. The um, higher oestrogen levels also tell the brain not to produce follicle stimulating hormone. So follicle stimulating hormone is needed to make a follicle grow. So they don't grow, so you don't ovulate. So you don't have periods, or if you do, they're irregular because although you're not ovulating, estrogen levels are there, so the lining of the womb does grow, but it comes away at irregular period, irregular times, so you get irregular periods. So that's sort of what we understand. That programming, unfortunately, we can't interfere with, or we can't change it in the long term. We can certainly interfere with it, and you yourself can interfere with it. If you increase your weight, i.e. put on more fat, 
you'll produce more estrogen and therefore make the situation worse. We can interfere with it by giving medication that tricks the brain into believing that the estrogen levels are falling. So there's a drug called letrozole, uh, which uh, blocks the conversion of male hormones into estrogen. So it drops the estrogen levels and so the brain thinks that it's coming up to a period and therefore <coughs> it produces FSH. Because that's what the brain is originally programmed to do. There's another drug called clomiphene and that actually attaches to the pituitary gland and um, blocks estrogen entering the pituitary. So again, the brain thinks that estrogen levels have dropped and it responds appropriately by producing FSH. But they're temporary measures. They don't last. So month on month, you have to continue to take the medication to get regular ovulation. We can also bypass the system by using FSH itself. So um, by giving injections of FSH, we can stimulate the ovaries directly. And what will happen um, is that follicles will grow and ovulation can occur. The risk with that in women who have got polycystic ovaries is they may produce lots of eggs and multiple pregnancies are more common. And so we have to watch those patients very, very carefully. And as a last resort, we may have to go to IVF. I have to say that I'm concerned that we go to IVF far too quickly when women have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Because making women ovulate regularly does not produce a pregnancy immediately in most cases. All it is doing is returning to a natural rate of conception, which is around 15% every month. But that goes month on month on month on month. So that 15% in three to four months is as good as having one IVF cycle. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu.